This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE2301 statics. This is a little example of vector addition. As we know, vectors are quantities, magnitudes with a direction. And we want to be able to add two vectors together and get the resultant. So, in this case, We've got vector 1, F1, is magnitude of 500 pounds, and it's in this direction. Then at 55 degrees from it, we have vector F2, which is a magnitude of 300 pounds. Now, in some situations, we'll be given various other angles, but we've got to be able to get to the point where we know the angle between those two vectors. There's another kind of... Uh, problem where we're trying to work towards that angle. But anyway, for this one, we're, we know somehow, in this case I'm giving it to you directly, 55 degrees is the angle between those two vectors. Okay, the first step, determine the resultant. The first thing we want to know is that is the resultant. The first step using the parallelogram law is to draw these parallel lines to the two vectors that we know. So I've drawn a line up here in red. It's parallel to this line of vector F2. And I've drawn a line in red over here that's parallel to vector F1. And I can, they're going to intersect at some point up here. And the length of this line is also going to be 300. And the length of this line is also going to be 500. That's where I say it really helps to draw your sketches and drawings to, as close as you can to scale so uh, you get a, a good feel for what the correct answer is. And I've done that as well as I can here. Graph paper, it's even better. So first step, draw those parallel lines. Step two, connect the origin down here, point O, to the intersection of those two lines with a, a line that is my resultant, R, which is another vector. And that's what I'm trying to figure out the, the length of, the magnitude of. Okay, what that creates, those parallel lines create a parallelogram. And I can, from geometry, I know if this line is parallel to this line, and this line intersects this line up here. If this angle is 55 degrees, this angle is 55 degrees. You see that? And because the sum of those two angles has got to be 180 degrees, I can figure out what this angle is, 125 degrees, which is 180 minus 55. So once I know that, I also see dividing the resultant R divides my parallelogram into two similar triangles that are uh, mirror images of each other. Anyway, so this angle is 125 degrees from that relationship. That's 55, that's 55. So I'm now going to use the law of cosines, which relates to this basic triangle with three sides of length A, B, and C. And the opposite angle from each side is the corresponding uh, Greek alphabet letter. This angle here, opposite A, is alpha. Opposite B is beta. Opposite C is gamma. So the law of cosine states that the length of one side, the square of it, is equal to the, square, the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus two times those two lengths times the cosine of the opposite angle from the side, the length of the side I'm trying to get. So in this case, R is what I'm trying to solve for. A and B are these lengths 300 and 500. And this alpha gamma, this angle gamma is 125 degrees. I have everything I need to solve it. Plug into the equation, 500 squared plus 300 squared minus 2 times 500 times 300 times the cosine of 125. 
is 700 and take the square root of it that's 715.6 so I would report my answer is 716 pounds three significant digits okay I look at that graphically I always want to say does that make sense if this is 500 and this is 300 yeah that looks like 700 something okay part two is just determine the angle between F1 and the resultant that means this angle here that I've called beta and I've drawn it in black to figure out this kind of angle it's still based on this kind of triangle with these dimensions and angles we use the law of sines which states that the sine of the opposite angle from the side you know divided by the sides length is equal to that that same relationship holds throughout the triangle sine of alpha um, divided by the length a is equal to the sine of beta divided by the length b is equal to the sine of gamma divided by the length of c and so for this case I know this angle 125 degrees I've just solved for the result at 715.6 so that's the opposite side divided into the sine of the angle opposite it and I want to know this side this angle its opposite side is this 300 pound length or magnitude up here so sine of 125 over 715.6 is equal to the sine of the unknown angle divided by 300 that length there I rearrange sine of beta is equal to 0.3434 and therefore the angle beta is equal to the inverse sine of that 20.1 degrees looks like about a 20 point one degree angle doesn't it anytime I can in engineering or taking tests or doing homework I always want to check things whenever I can and it's pretty easy I can also figure out what this angle here is which I've called alpha and it is the opposite angle I'm going to deal with the inverse triangle down here on the bottom side and I've still got this length I know that's still 125 degrees because it's the opposite corresponding angle to that one so I check that the sine of 125 over this length 715.6 should be equal to the sine of alpha this unknown angle divided by the length over here 500 rearrange do the inverse sine of that I get that that angle alpha is equal to 34.9 degrees which makes me feel happy because that is 55 this known angle minus the beta angle 20.1 so that checks out